Hi, my name is Myra Michaels and I work here in tech support at YSI and I'd like to go over the menu structure of the um, MIQ TC 2020 XT. Okay, in this video I'd like to talk about the menu structure of the MIQ TC 2020 XT. Um, we have six buttons. We have the M button. I like to think of that as the main menu button. So if you're anywhere in the screens, you can press the M button. It's going to take you back to this main menu. The C button I like to think of um, as calibrate or sensor check or a matrix adjustment. You can do any of those by, by accessing or hitting that C button. Um, the S button is the settings menu. Um, escape will back you out one screen and if you're in a settings menu and you press the OK button it's going to advance one screen. The arrow keys will move you up and down and side to side through the menu as needed. From the main menu the OK button also has an additional screen uh, that you, a set of options you can get to. So in this case we can take a look at the logbook of the entire system. You can look at the logbook of a selected sensor. You can switch maintenance condition on and off. You can look at the calibration history of a selected sensor, recorded measured values of a selected sensor, and you can also display all values or local values. And you can choose to look at one sensor, four sensors, or eight sensors on the main display. So just to give you an example, I'm going to choose to set that to eight sensors and you can see how small the font has gotten. Once again I'm going to press the OK button to get back in there. Let's set the measured values to one sensor and you can see how big the font is and you have this bar graph going across the top. Um, I personally like to set this at four sensors because that's generally what I have on my system. Now since I have um, these lights flashing up here. That tells me I have something in my logbook. And as you can see, none of these have been checkmarked. So I could go into any of these error messages and take a look. It tells us a new IQ sensor net component has been identified and it tells me it's the V solid. I'm going to go back, back to the main menu. I'll show you what happens in the calibrate or the C button. So whenever you hit the C button you're going to see this. Maintenance condition, linked outputs are frozen, and then it'll ask you to continue. Um, I'm going to continue just to show you that in this particular says sensor, um, set the TSS and SIO2 values, um, you're going to have to refer to the operating manual. That's because we can't actually calibrate uh, the sensors or the TSS sensor in this menu. So I'm going to go back and hit the M button. So you can see we are flashing, which means I'm in maintenance mode. And we're going to get out of maintenance mode by pressing the OK button. Going down, switch our maintenance condition on and off. It says, asks me if I want to do that. I say yes, press the OK button to continue. And if I press the M button, you can see I'm no longer in a um, maintenance condition. So we've kind of, kind of gone through the M button and the C button, escape, OK, and up and down. Now, let's press the S button. This is kind of where all the magic happens. This is our settings menu. So at the top you see we have language, and you can choose from a variety of languages if you want to. This data transfer to the USB memory, kind of important. Um, here you can save your configuration. You can put a USB thumb drive, um, you know, in, into the opening down here, and you can save your configuration to that thumb drive. You can also send or save your measured data storage, your logbook, calibration history, and if you've lost your links and you have your configuration saved to a thumb drive, you can put it back in here and you can retransfer your configuration to your system so that uh, you don't have to reprogram everything. Here we have access control. 
And if you take a look, we can lock and unlock the system here. We can set a password. We can get into extended access control here. Um, and we can look in the manual if you, if you have further interest in that. Select, valued, or select measured values of a location. Um, if we wanted to take this 2020 and walk around, let's say, a larger plant, and you had certain sensors in Basin 1, um, and you only wanted to see what was in Basin 1, then you could choose by check marking uh, which sensors you wanted to see when you take this 2020 to a different location. Going to escape and go back one. Measured value logging. So this is where you're going to set up logging in your system. Um, the way that, that we move through it is a little bit convoluted. So I'm going to show you that. First we want to highlight like this minutes column and you press OK. And that's going to give us you know, one, single, um, one single option. So as you can see, I can press up and down and it's not moving. I have to press the OK button again in order to kind of drill down into the menu. And at this point, I can choose how often I want to log data. So if I choose five minutes, I have to press the OK button to lock that in. Again, I'm going to press Escape, and I can start moving around like to my duration column. So now I have zero days duration that I want to log every five minutes. But if I press the OK button, you can see I can't move around. I can't change anything unless I press OK again. At this point, I can change five days, 10 days. I can change 30 days. And as I'm changing my days, if you look down here to the free storage, it is changing the amount of free storage I have. So I could go all the way up until I have no free storage, 1,800 days for just this one sensor. Um, if I filled it up, it would kind of loop back around. And the last or the first data that was in would be, you know, the 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 first data out. So in this case, I'm going to make it less than 1,800 days. I'm just going to make it 10 days. Press OK to log that in. And then again, I'm going to press the Escape button to highlight that entire column so I can start moving around in this in this um, particular screen. Go over to Save and Quit, press OK, and it brings me back to the Settings menu. Let's go down to the Edit List of Sensors. As you can see here, I've got the vSolid, and I could change the sensor name if I wanted to, or um, I could change the sensor name here if I wanted to just by highlighting it and pressing the up and down arrow keys to name it whatever I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here at, at the serial number. If I had another sensor in here, or if there had been one and it wasn't currently here, this might have a question mark next to it. That just means that it is not currently seen by the system, and you could choose to um, edit that sensor out or delete that data set. Okay, so from Edit List of Sensors, we can go down to Edit List of Outputs. And here, I can name my outputs. I could name this Basin 1, Basin 2, whatever I wanted to name it. I can name it Fred if I wanted to name it Fred. But in this case, I'm just going to escape. Settings of sensors and diff sensors. This one, you can look at your sensor, choose it, and we can make changes to the settings of that sensor. So I have a TSS sensor here. I could change the measuring mode if I wanted. Um, you know matrix type 2 grams per liter. Um, I can go down and change the measuring range. I have auto range or I can choose you know one of the other options. But the default is auto range. Our calibration data is currently set to default calibration. If I did a user calibration which would be um, value pairs then you would see it, it come up as user calibration. Correction factor default currently set to 1. Our signal averaging the default is 60 seconds, and the U, uh, UL cleaning and sensor check, that says on, on, and that's just cleaning the sensor. We would save and quit if we wanted to, or if you just want to you know, back out, you could either hit the escape or you could hit quit. I'm going to escape 
Now let's go down to settings of outputs and links. Press the OK button, and here you would choose um, what what 4 to 20s you wanted to set and then link to what sensor. So it comes up and you have this ampris and sign this column highlighted. You press the OK button to kind of drill down and to choose which, um, in this case, I'm going to choose C1. And I press OK and it's going to ask me which sensor I want it to link to. And since I only have one sensor, I could link it to SO5 right there. As you can see, now it's linked. I hit Escape to highlight that entire column. Now I can move back and forth. Now, if I wanted to change my no function to something, I could press the OK button and highlight and then move through that screen. In this case, I'm going to press the Escape button. And then we're going to go down to Setting Bus Interfaces. Press an OK here. I don't have a mod bus or a, a bus module on here. But if I did, this is where I would make my settings. Alarm settings, this menu, you can, you can set your alarms. And you can just choose to link to your sensors and set your alarms there. System settings, this is where you set your date time. Um, in, in your terminal, you, you can change your brightness um, and your contrast. Um, and there are you know, just several different settings in here that, that you might find helpful. Your location and altitude, that's where you're going to change these things. And down here to service, if you call us, we're going to ask you frequently for, let's say, your list of, you know, we'll ask you to get down and tell me what's in your system, and you can go to the list of all components and read what's in the system. You can also see your software version here. Acknowledge all messages. As you can see, I have messages up here flashing, which we talked about a little while ago. If I acknowledge all my messages, I press OK and acknowledge, and it just acknowledged all of those messages we had in the beginning of this video. Factory reset, self-explanatory. Um, if I wanted to set, set it back to factory settings, then I would just do a factory reset. Enter command code, not something that is normally used. Um, sometimes if there is a, a software update, um, but, but rarely is that ever used. Change the sensor number. If your sensors were, were misnumbered, then you could come in here and change the sensor number to whatever number you wanted that to be. I'll change that to sensor number one, press OK. And now that is sensor number one. As long as I hit Escape and Save and Quit. It asks me, basically, are you sure you want to do that and execute the change? If I needed to do a software update, which is available at our website at ysi.com, you can put your, you can download the latest software update to a thumb drive, and you can um, put in the 2020, and you can do your software update to this device, the 2020. This is if you had an MC2 or something with a USB, you could update, do a software update on the components with the USB, and this option is to do a software update on any other components such as sensors or a CR3. And that's your basic menu structure of the 2020.